You look weak and tired. So much pollution around. I feel sick. But who are you? I'm Mark, an astronaut. And I have been sent on a space mission. Industrialization and technology have changed the environment. Let me take you on an environmental tour to show you why I feel choked and unwell. I will show you how various factors in the environment interact with each other and how human beings impact the environment. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain what an ecosystem is, identify the role of the producers, consumers and the decomposers in the food chain and list a few of the environmental problems caused by our negligence. The environment comprises the air you breathe, the water that covers the surface, the animals and the plants around you, and much more. The environment is made up of various ecosystems like gardens, lakes, forests, etc. An ecosystem is a place where living organisms and the non-living components of the environment interact with each other. All organisms such as plants, animals, microorganisms and human beings as well as the physical surroundings interact with each other and maintain a balance in nature. All these living organisms in an area interact with the non-living constituents of the environment and such interaction is referred to as ecosystem. Thus, an ecosystem consists of biotic components comprising living organisms and abiotic components comprising physical factors like temperature, rainfall, wind, soil and minerals. It looks wonderful from here. But are there any specific roles that each of these animals play in the ecosystem? Or do they all contribute equally to the ecosystem? Organisms in the ecosystem are grouped as producers, consumers and decomposers based on the manner in which they sustain themselves in the environment. Producers are organisms that produce their own food without the help of any other organisms. They make their food from inorganic substances. They are also known as autotrophs. All green plants and certain blue-green algae, which can produce food by photosynthesis, come under this category. Consumers are organisms that cannot produce their own food and depend on producers for their food. Consumers are known as heterotrophs. They depend on autotrophs for their food. These organisms consume the food produced either directly from the producers or indirectly by feeding on other consumers. Consumers can be classified as herbivores, carnivores, omnivores and parasites. Decomposers help to decompose the dead remains of organisms. In the process, complex molecules are broken down into simpler molecules. If they decompose the dead remains, how does it help the ecosystem? The decomposed material is used up by other organisms, primarily plants, as nutrients for their sustenance.
Let me sum it up. Decomposers are also known as organisms of decay or saprobes. They are microorganisms that break down the dead remains and waste products of organisms that can be used by other members of the ecosystem. Bacteria and fungi are examples of saprobes. We have spoken about the groups of organisms in an ecosystem. This brings us to a series or a chain. What is this chain? It is a flow of energy from one species to another, to yet another, and so on. You have seen organisms that feed on one another to sustain themselves in the ecosystem. This develops a food chain in the ecosystem. Food chains describes the feeding relationships between organisms within an ecosystem. Let us take this chart as an example. It depicts the different organisms that are connected in an ecosystem. The arrows in the chart connect the lower level organism that is consumed by the higher level organism. This seems to show the flow of energy transfer. The way energy is passed from the producer to the consumer? Correct. Each step or level of the food chain forms a trophic level. Trophic levels are categorized as per their feeding behavior. The autotrophs or the producers, that is, the plants, are at the first trophic level. The herbivores or the primary consumers, like bees, insects, come at the second level. Small carnivores like rats, snakes, or secondary consumers come at the third level and larger carnivores like an eagle or tertiary consumers form the fourth trophic level. Did you know that a huge amount of energy is lost at each stage in the food chain? Oh, I didn't know that. Why do we eat? To get energy. The food you eat acts as fuel and provides energy for work. This energy is passed on to the various trophic levels right from the producers to the tertiary consumers. Autotrophs capture the energy present in sunlight and convert it into chemical energy. This energy supports all the activities of the living world. From the autotrophs, the energy through the food chain goes to the heterotrophs. So, when one form of energy is changed to another, some energy is lost to the environment in forms such as solid waste, movement energy and heat energy which cannot be used again. Therefore, only a small amount of energy is transferred to the next trophic level. So what is the amount of energy that is transferred from one trophic level to the next? The green plants in a terrestrial ecosystem capture about 1% of the energy of sunlight that falls on their leaves and converts it into food energy. When these green plants are eaten by primary consumers, a great deal of energy is lost as heat to the environment. Some amount goes into digestion and in work and the rest goes towards growth and reproduction. An average of 10% of the food eaten is turned into its own body and made available for the next level of consumers. Therefore, 10% can be taken as the average value for the amount of organic matter that reaches the next level of consumers. With only 10% of energy reaching the next level, 
Isn't it difficult to manage the ecosystem? Well, it certainly limits the number of trophic levels in a food chain. There are generally a greater number of individuals at the lower trophic levels of an ecosystem. The length and the complexity of food chains vary greatly. Each organism is generally eaten by two or more other kinds of organisms, which in turn are eaten by several other organisms. This is something like the plants and fruits eaten by goats, cows, rats, and rabbits, and subsequently rats being eaten by owls or snakes or cats. That's right. Instead of a straight line food chain, the relationship can be shown as a series of branching lines called a food web. Did you know that unknowingly harmful chemicals can enter your body through the food chain? Oh. One of the reasons is the use of several pesticides and other chemicals to protect crops from diseases and pests. These chemicals are either washed down into the soil or into water bodies. These are absorbed from the soil by the plants along with water and minerals and these are taken up by aquatic plants and animals from water bodies. This is one of the ways in which they enter the food chain. Why isn't anything being done about it? As these chemicals are not degradable, these get accumulated progressively at each trophic level. As human beings occupy the top level in any food chain, the maximum concentration of these chemicals gets accumulated in your body. This phenomenon is known as biological magnification. Does this mean that my body is affected too? You are concerned with the chemicals entering your body, but not worried about the environment? You have been polluting the air, causing deforestation and acid rains, thereby not only endangering me and other living organisms, but also yourselves. This is why food grains such as wheat and rice, vegetables and fruits, and even meat, contain varying amounts of pesticide residues. These residues cannot always be removed by washing or by other means. Let me show you how you have caused these environmental hazards. Though Pure plastics have generally low toxicity and would pass through the digestive system without much ill effects. They are durable and non-biodegradable, but the manufacturing and burning of plastics can release toxic gases. Oh, I see. So plastics stay in the Earth's crust for a long time. But why are they not biodegradable? Can you digest stones? Of course not. Just like the enzymes in the stomach can act only on specific foods, the bacteria and saprobes can degrade only organic substances but not man-made plastics. Plastics can only be acted upon by physical processes like heat, and pressure. Now I get it. The ozone is a molecule formed by three atoms of oxygen. The UV radiations at higher levels of atmosphere split atmospheric oxygen into free oxygen atoms. These free atoms combine with atmospheric oxygen and form ozone. There is an ozone layer in the stratosphere which acts as a natural sunblock and shields you from the UV radiations of the sun.
Do you know what could happen if this shield is weak and the UV radiation penetrates through it? This radiation can cause damage to organisms. It is known to cause skin cancer in human beings. In the 1980s, it was discovered that the amount of ozone in the atmosphere had begun to drop sharply. This was linked to synthetic chemicals like chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, which are used as refrigerants and in fire extinguishers. In 1987, the United Nations Environment Programme, UNEP, succeeded in forging an agreement to freeze CFC production at 1986 levels. That was a close call. You have been given many chances, but you never learn. Let's look at another hazard. Visit any town or city and you are sure to find heaps of garbage or solid waste. The increased use of non-degradable items such as syringes, plastics, and polythene bags has resulted in much of your waste becoming non-biodegradable. What do you think will be the impact of these on the environment? We have grown tremendously in technology and lifestyle, but lost out on simple things. We have moved so far ahead that we can think of walking in space but have lost our footing on earth. Thanks for all the information and insight. I hope it has been useful to you. I only hope your mission was fruitful. Oh, this mission has been very enriching and thought-provoking too. Thanks. Once again. Bye.